did my MA research on Carnival in Quebec City, and as I was doing that research, uh, it kept coming back to me that the real strength of traditional culture was being lost in cities, uh, Quebec City in 1894 is what I looked at, but uh, the real strength of this popular culture that was being borrowed for a businessman's um, celebration was in the countryside. So I thought when I go back to school and do the PhD, I want to go back to find out the roots. Then the question is, well, where do you go? And fortunately, I, I thought of the Beauce right away because I've known people there for a long time. And uh, so I thought, I'll go there and see what place I'm going to study. I thought maybe I should do three parishes anyway. Uh, drove from Montreal and didn't take the direct route, but um, then I came over the hill from uh, asbestos um, and took the road to uh, the Chaudière Valley. And I came upon Saint Joseph, one of the three places I thought I'd study. The other was Saint Marie and the other was Saint Francois, I think, uh, one's north, one's south of Saint Joseph. I come over the hill, cross the bridge, and there it is in front of me. Uh, this big tall church, a convent, a, a palatial rectory, what else? There's something else. Anyway, there it was. I said, so I thought, this is the place I want to study. So there's one. And then when I was there in the, the local archives, which are in the old convent, I uh, started reading the, the priest's reports of people's behavior. And my motivation for taking up the subject in the first place is, well, if the church controlled people's lives, how did they do it? What is the process of uh, taking uh, people who in the French regime were considered by religious as well as civil authorities to be rebellious, uncontrollable, um, not terribly religious, good Catholics but not in a, in a demonstratively religious way. So what changed them into the, the docile people of the 19th century? But the more I looked, after I started reading the first couple of reports, I thought, no, the narrative's wrong. If the priests are saying, we're not controlling these people, I thought, well, maybe I better believe them and, and, and find out what it is that uh, uh, the priests have, priests have a problem with. Um, so the other aha moment was, I guess, at the Vancouver Folk Festival, when, um, uh, um, which we've been going to for, I don't know, 35 years or something like that, when you see um, Quebec culture or at one point Newfoundland culture, and the culture of the time, you think, yes, this really moved people. This, uh, this gave them the possibility to affirm themselves. You know, they can be uh, members of a political community, a religious community, but at some, some point they're a community of like-minded people who celebrate together, who have these uh, little moments of uh, community solidarity that are not quantifiable but are nonetheless real. And all of these things, I guess it wasn't one moment, but a number of moments that kind of crystallized around this. So I had um, wonderful years going to the archives in San Joseph, and I have to say the, the diocesan archives in Quebec City as well, uh, where a lot of the reports were, uh, that uh, made me see that uh, there's something in the affirmative power of popular culture that uh, gave these people a sense of who they were. Um, uh, um, the Italian uh, historian, uh, Levi basically said the same thing. If people can find their own moments of solidarity and give them uh, autonomy within the structures around them, what is this, what is this thing? And, and uh, the more I looked at their popular culture, the more I thought this is their means of uh, autonomy.